Hello everyone, welcome to Ikita platform and this is Robin Jangit here, your electrical faculty and in this video I am going to talk about the current margin method. So I have included some of the important points which I have listed here and we will talk one by one of them. So let's start. So the, it is saying that uh, this is the most widely considered and the natural extension of the current philosophy in the two terminal system. As we are having the different types of terminal systems and uh, we are generally preferring the bipolar system as it is advantageous to use if we are considering, if we are comparing, you can say if we are comparing with the, the single terminal system and that is the monopolar system. So we are generally considering the bipolar systems. So it is saying this is the most widely considered. So that is the current margin method is most widely considered and it is kind of the natural extension of the current or uh, you can say the control philosophy in the two terminal system. Now one of the converter station which is operating at an angle limit at an angle limit. What is the angle limit? The minimum alpha that is uh, the alpha minimum you can say or uh, the, and the second is the minimum gamma that is the gamma minimum here yeah, you can write that is a determine the DC voltage. So it is actually going to specify that one of the converter stations as we are having the two different converter stations one is the rectifier another is the inverter okay so which is operating an angle limit it means if we are talking about the rectifier then it is going to operate at the alpha minimum. Uh, for uh, the determination of the DC voltage and if we are considering the inverters then the inverter is going to be operated for the gamma minimum okay then that determines the DC voltage value now the remaining terminals okay so whatever will be the remaining if we are operating at the rectifier then the remaining will be on the receiving side that is on the inverter side so remaining terminals operate as a current once again the current controlling terminals and let us say uh, n and which is given by the i n so this is the formula i have uh, written for you and it is here the specified by the minus the sigma j equal to 1 to n minus 1 so if we are taking the n number of uh, terminals then it is n minus 1 so it will start from 1 and end at the n minus 1 before that the last one and that is the i j Okay, so where that n is actually representing the number of terminals in the given equations. Okay, and the and the inverter currents and the inverter currents are treated as negative. So this is all about that when the we are uh, operating at the rectifier, then we are taking the equations on the inverter side, and if we are taking the on the inverter side, so please remember that the inverter currents inverter currents are going to be negative here are treated as negative while the re, uh, uh, rectifier currents are treated as the positive okay now the current controlling terminals operate with the voltage margin okay so if you're talking about the current controlling terminals okay whether uh, we uh, generally used or to specify the terminals where the current control is done okay at that condition the so voltage margin voltage margin which may become zero or the negative during the disturbances in the ac system now using the current control method using the current control method at the voltage setting terminal which is a kind of the slack terminal such that it tries to maintain the same current as before whatever the current before the, the your as you have to control the whatever was the before as in the normal condition will be the same after the uh, uh, you can say the abnormal condition you can say now because of the measurement errors if uh, due to the some equipments or the stray magnetic field or stray losses okay and the human uh, errors so whenever there are the measurement errors okay in the instruments and the requirements of the smooth transition from the angle control to the current control okay then the current references at the voltage setting terminal is chosen to satisfy the following equations and this is the equation is here that is a sigma j minus 1 
2n and ij ref okay and that is the i margin now the converter with the lowest voltage ceiling the converter with the lowest voltage ceiling is always acts as the voltage setting terminal so this is actually the voltage setting terminal you have to remember here so whatever the converter where we are actually operating with the lowest voltage ceiling then it is going to be the voltage setting terminal what will be that is a voltage setting terminal now the changes in the voltage setting terminal whatever if there is a disturbance okay in the your system so there will be the many changes can be seen in the your voltage setting terminal according to that and so it is written here due to the disturbance in the ac system are called mode shifts are called mode shift so this name is important while writing your exams okay now uncontrolled mode shift when there is uh, no control when the disturbance are there okay when there are no control when the disturbance are there so that is called the uncontrolled uh, mode shift and can be minimized if we are interested in minimizing that uncontrolled mode shift that can be minimized by selecting the terminal with the highest short circuit ratio and as the voltage setting terminal due to the negative resistance and the, that negative resistance we generally see on the inverter side of the constant extinction angle control that is a gamma okay constant extinction angle control that we have seen that is a cea okay it would be advisable to use a rectifier terminal as a vst okay and what is the vst that is the voltage setting terminal voltage setting terminal so due to the negative resistance characteristics of the current uh, or constant extinction angle control so all and over we can say this is on the inverter side that is on the inverter side and if you go through the equivalent circuit of rectifier and the inverter in the combined manner then where we have seen that rc1 and the minus rc2 so that is actually representing the negative resistance and which is only on the inverter side so it is uh, it would be advisable to use a rectifier terminal as a vst so that is written here now look at the sum of the points other now the central control central controller for the operation of all these things the central controller that regulate the current orders and all the converter station is termed as the current to reference balancer that is the crb we generally know what is that that is the crb so whenever we call the crb that is the current to reference balancer okay and as shown in the diagram and that diagram is i have taken this is kind of the analog uh, diagram which is uh, i have taken these are the limiters here we are having the limiters i dash ref okay that is a reference current one two three and there is the summing points which are given here there are the gains k1 k2 and the k3 and high this is the high gain amplifier this is the weighting factors this is the i margins we have uh, used here now look at that the limits on the current orders are taken into account in the balancing current reference the actual implementation of the crb can be performed by using the microprocessor uh, you can say the balancing the current reference or you can say the crb so that will only be performed by using the microprocessor because that is the high technology we are generally using now the satisfactory operation of the empty dc system multi terminal dc uh, dc system requires a reliable central crb okay that operates at all the times so that it can operate at all the times when there is a disturbance or not it will it will be uh, it will going to be operated at all the time so that is kind of the satisfactory operation of the mtdc uh, mtdc system or you can say any system you can say no this requires a reliable two way communications reliable two way communications between the central stations and each converter stations so there will be the one central stations and uh, side by side they are having the two different converters one is your uh, rectifier another is your inverter 
so it is kind of the two way communications and that will be from the main uh, central stations to the rectifier or the one main stations to the your inverter site now if there is a loss of stations there is a loss of, a loss of stations then this information is not communicated the system operation and it is adversely affected now in case of the loss of rectifier stations in case of loss of rectifier stations then the power transfer is actually interrupted so there will be an interruption in the power supply from sending to receiving end by the voltage collapse and in case of the loss of inverter stations if there is a, so obviously we will have the we are having the two converter stations one is the rectifier so there will be a loss of rectifier another may be a chance of the loss of the inverter so if there is a chances of the rectifier uh, loss of the rectifier stations then what will happen the power transfer is interrupted by the voltage collapse and in case of the loss of inverter station other stations will be overloaded so whatever the so it can you can say the rectify side it is going to be overloaded there so i hope uh, all the points which i have included here for you and this also this diagram uh, you have understood uh, carefully thank you so much